Girlfriend, do you have dark circles where you have come to the right place? If you've ever wondered how to eliminate dark circles, I'm going to share that with you in today's video. Hi, my name is Inga Faye and I am a beauty enthusiast. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how do you get dark circles under your eyes. It's, it may not be necessarily what you think, but I think after you watch this, you will definitely understand. Next, I'm going to share with you how to cure your dark circles. I got a couple of tricks up my sleeve that I think you would really find valuable and that you can implement immediately. And last but definitely not least, while you're still trying to cure your dark circles, I'm going to share with you how to cover up your dark circles with foundation because I have dark circles, but you don't see them. So I want to show you the little tricks of the trade. Let's do this, shall we? So how do you get dark circles? Really dark circles are a direct symptom of you not getting enough rest. If you are tired, girlfriend, you can really get those dark circles. And that's what happens. The body naturally gets darker around the eye area when you haven't had enough rest. So one of the things that I would recommend for you to do is delegate some of the activities or the tasks that you have to do to someone else, maybe to an older child or hire somebody. I know one of the things that I have actually enjoyed doing is to have someone else do my grocery shopping for me. So I pay a service to actually go out and get my groceries and bring them to my house. It saves me so much time because I know I would be running up and down the grocery aisles trying to get whatever is needed for the family when I actually could be using that time to do incoming producing activities inside my business. So I strongly recommend you do those kind of things too and delegate some of the tasks that you have so you can take the necessary time for yourself, pamper yourself and get the proper rest so you don't have the dark circles. Another thing that I wanted to recommend is you want to make sure you're drinking a water to flush out any toxin and salt concentrations that you've consumed. If you're not getting enough water, that's another reason why you could potentially have dark circles or have puffiness under your eyes because you haven't flushed out the toxins in your body. So you want to make sure that you do that on a regular basis, consuming water throughout the day, not just at one time. I know that was one thing that I thought I was supposed to do. It's like, well, I'm supposed to drink X amount of water a day. So I'm going to get it in all at one time. You want to gradually be just having a little bit of water consistently across the day. And then last, but definitely not least, your dark circles or your the darkness around your eyes could be hereditary. And this can be seen a lot in African-American women, they're darker around their arms. And I'll just say really in women of color, because I, I've seen people that are of a darker persuasion that experience this darkness around their eyes. And the hereditary, of course, you can't do anything about it because that's just the way God made you. But later in the video, I will show you how to conceal your dark circles so it can't be seen. Now, before I move on to tell you how to cure your dark circles, I'm curious. I wanted to find out which of these things do you think your dark circles are coming from? Is it you not getting enough rest? Is it having enough water intake or is it hereditary? Comment below and let us know exactly why you think you have dark circles. All of us would love to hear what you are, are thinking. So now let's talk about how you could potentially cure your dark circles. Now, initially, the first thing that I told you is making sure that I'm getting the proper rest. It is recommended that you get six to eight hours of rest every night. Better to delegate some of those things out because as a mom... Our job never ends. Mama is the nucleus of everything. Everything centers around her. If we're not taking care of ourselves, we're not going to be able to take care of the ones that we love because it's similar to what they do on the airplane. We have to put on our mask first before we can help somebody else. So make sure you put your mask on first. When I, and I say mask, I'm talking about the mask that come out of the, the plane if there was some kind of emergency on the plane. They always recommend you put your mask on first and then you help someone else. This is the same type of thing. We want you to take care of yourself first so you then can help the others that you love to be the best that they can be. The next thing I wanted to share with you is the water intake, but it really is based on your activity level. It's also based on your the climate that you live in and your body weight. So all three of these things can directly affect how much water you actually need. So the go-to, as you most of the time hear, is the eight glasses of water, and a glass is considered to be eight ounces. That's 64 ounces of water a day. But depending on where you live, how much activity you are engaged in, and how much you weigh, that 
could greatly increase. I know I live on the Gulf Coast where it's very humid and and in the summer, you're going to need more water because you're going to be sweating it off. Now, I'm also a person that works out on a regular basis too. And I know when I'm doing my workout, I need my water because I am sweating, which is where I'm losing fluids as I sweat. And as a result of that, I have to replenish those fluids by drinking water while I'm exercising. And then of course, if you weigh a certain amount, the weight has a lot to do with how much water you need to intake too. So these three have a direct effect on how much water that is needed for you. So it's a customized type of need more so than me giving you a generic, oh, just have eight glasses of water a day. You have to find out what's best for you. And if you're really wanting to combat these dark circles, you're going to take the time and put in the effort to find out how much water you really need to have and do what you need to do to in intake that water to make sure that you're flushing out the toxins as well as that those salt concentrations that are causing the dark circles around your eyes. I know another remedy that I have found that works for those people that don't have hereditary type of dark circles is eye creams. And eye creams are great because they hydrate the eye area because the eye area is so delicate. It needs a specific type of cream for that area to minimize the lines and wrinkles and the crow's feet, actually hydrating that eye area for up to 12 hours, the ones that I have seen. Most of the time, an eye cream is an anti-aging cream, so it's going to have antioxidants and anti-aging ingredients. Normally, when you use an eye cream, you're using eye cream after you apply your moisturizer. Some of the eye creams, you can kind of squirt out, and when you do that, you would use your ring finger because that's the weakest finger of your hand to apply the eye cream in. You kind of use a patting motion to apply it in. You blend the eye cream and it's going to be a little bit below your nose because eye cream has a tendency to creep up. So you want to be sure that you pat the eye cream in and blend it in under your eye, up under your brow to really hydrate that eye area. And those are the areas that normally have a tendency to be affected by the darks. There are also other eye creams that actually have a roller on it that will help minimize the puffiness up under your eyes. So you can use the roller to squeeze the eye cream out and blend the eye cream with the roller. It has ions in it that will help depuff the eye area as well as really blend in the eye cream so it can really get into your skin to get the maximum benefit. There are also eye patches that you can wear. They're like uh, half smiles that you can put under your eyes that allow you to work on the depuffiness and hydration in the eye area. It can also help with dark circles as well. So if you're interested in those kind of products, those type of the products are listed in the description below. Now, before before I go into how to cover your dark circles with foundation, I wanted to re remind you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll be uploading a video every Tuesday for your viewing pleasure. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. Just hit the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. So let's talk about how to cover up dark circles with foundation. One of the things that I have used to cover up my dark circles is concealer. And the concealer is normally a couple of shades lighter than your actual foundation. You want it to be that way. That way it will blend into the dark circle. So when you put your foundation on top of it, it looks like the perfect match. It actually blends into your skin. Now, if you're like me, a person that has watery eyes at times, I make it a point to actually do what's called a baking technique. And baking is just using a sponge to put a large amount of mineral powder or translucent powder under your eye area. Now, let me explain the, the how this works. When you apply your concealer and you can decide whether you want to put your concealer on before your foundation or after your foundation, it's really a personal preference. I know for me, I put my concealer on first. When you put your concealer on, then you apply the foundation on top of it. And when you put the foundation on top of it, you want to make sure that you're not rubbing it in. Because when you rub it in, that means that you're wiping the, the concealer away. You want it actually to stay in place. That's why it's very important to bake because it sets the makeup, the foundation, as well as the concealer in place with the powder. And what happens, you put an excess amount of a foundation in under the eye and you let it sit two to five minutes where it warms up just by your natural body heat. And then you wipe the excess away. And what that does is it sets the makeup in that eye area. So if you your eyes start to water or if you have allergies, it doesn't mess up the makeup. Now, 
I'm, if your eye starts worrying profusely, it's not going to work. I know that from experience, but I can tell you it does work if you just kind of have a couple of tears. It will allow you to keep that foundation up in place and you keep your polished and flawless look. Now, this baking can be done with the flesh tone mineral powder or with translucent powder. Now, the difference between flesh tone and translucent is that translucent is white powder. And I know personally for my brown skin, when I use translucent powder, it leaves a white film that I don't like. This is my experience with it. If you want to try it out and see if it works for you, you may be of a lighter persuasion than me. It may not matter as much to you, but I know with me, I don't like translucent powder. I use the flesh tone powder instead. So that's really a preference. So just customize it to meet your needs, you know, the God-given attributes you have so you can accentuate your personal positives. I would love for you to be a part of my next virtual beauty experience. In the description below, I do have a link where you can set up a time for us to meet, really find out what your perfect foundation shade is or even your skincare regimen and really customize a look that is tailored specifically for you and your God-given positives. If you're interested in that, just be sure to click the link below to get all the details. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.